Tesla stock, Tesla stock, Tesla stock. We're talking Tesla and Tesla only in this video here today, folks. Barclays cuts Tesla price target. Here's why. We're going to react to that video there. Then I want to get into this one. Tesla must pay package is a vote about the retention of Elon Musk going forward. Looking forward to reacting to that video there. Then the great Tesla debate. We're going to hear two individuals debate Tesla stock back and forth. I'll uh, share my opinions and perspectives. That should be a fun little fight there. And then we're going to get into this one last. Must pay package vote is a real test on if Tesla's a meme stock? Like, what, 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 what? Meme stock? We're putting Tesla in that category? Come on, man. Okay, that should be an interesting one to react to here today, folks. Appreciate you joining me. Thanks so much for being here. I'll ask in return. Smash a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel here today, folks. Also, I just want to let you guys know, I did let the main channel know. I have a tool I've been working on for quite some time behind the scenes. It's called 1000xstocks.com. I have opened up the wait list for that tool. And it's pretty awesome. 1000xstocks.com if you want to apply for that, okay? All right, let's get into this. Fascinating note, it's kind of in two parts. On the one hand, you're talking about a negative catalyst with the, the call next week. Next week, but then this broader but question about the, the binary outcome that, that depends on whether you go low cost car or uh, focus everything on autonomy, right? Yeah, that, that, that's exactly it. And, and I think that the question people are asking right now as to how to evaluate their Tesla position is, had they just stuck the course of going with a low-cost car, that was something maybe with a little more certainty where you could see Tesla capitalizing on its scale and cost advantages, and you would essentially treat things like RoboTaxi or Optimus as optionality. When you take away a low-cost car, then that means you're putting a lot more emphasis on these bets, RoboTaxi, Optimus, what have you, that people generally are going to view to be binary. And so it certainly adds a level of uncertainty. You think we can process all of that in the next 12 months and still hang on to 180? You know, I, I think that it, this, the investment narrative is going to have to play out, right? We do think that on one hand, there is a certain amount of, of upside for, for Tesla. You know, we've certainly... Let me, let me let you know if I agree with any of this. Expecting Q1 miss amid soft margins, but expectations are low. Do I agree with that? Yes, I, I agree with that. Q2 could have a downside if prices need to be cut given inventory build. Do I agree with that? Not really. I think there's a pretty low probability Tesla's doing any substantial price cuts from here. I think if anything, they're likely to go up on price, especially in the back half of the year. Q2, I think, is a little bit more of a wild card, so I'll say that. Plans for Model 2 will get most attention, but don't expect satisfying answer. I don't know where he's going with that. Seeing them do well with some of these advanced technologies, so those are certainly opportunities. But we fully acknowledge there is an air of uncertainty right now uh, as it relates to the, the strategy for them and, you know, the binary nature of these bets. I guess my question is into earnings. How much have expectations already come down on the numbers after the softer delivery report? What's expected now? Well, expectations have come down quite dramatically. Uh, we are below sell side numbers. We're at 41 cents for the quarter. I believe uh, sell side consensus is call it 53 cents, something in that in that range. We are below sell side consensus on the margins, um, but we think that the buy side possibly is already there. The buy side is already expecting quite depressed gross margins. Buy side is generally expecting vo minimal volume growth this year. So yes, on, on, on a headline basis, these are going to be quite negative in terms of a miss and soft gross margins and flat growth. But I will say in some ways, this is already being expected by the buy side. Have you done any analysis onto FSD, full self-driving, and what that would mean financially for this company and when it materializes? Before we go further here, you know, it just cracks me up. I was kind of smiling there because they're, you know, uh, trying to predict where exactly the EPS is going to be and the margin is going to be this year. And it's just like Tesla is such a different stock. Like no one that's that hold, that is holding Tesla stock long term cares about where the margins are this quarter or the EPS, whether they beat five cents, 10 cents, whether they are one percent higher, two percent higher, lower on margins. Like no one freaking cares about this quarter. Like, people are only investing in Tesla for the next 5, 10 years. 
Like what? No one's changing their investment thesis from the long side based upon if margins beat or miss this quarter or EPS. It's completely irrelevant. Completely, actually, the numbers this year in general are pretty much completely irrelevant to long-term investors. So it's quite comical. Yeah, so we embed FSD indirectly in the model by actually holding margins steady, even though they are ramping on um, margin, uh, volumes that are going to be more uh, dilutive. Um, you can do some back of the envelope math and see that it does add some value, but it just depends on what the take rates are. Now, FSD is one stream. There is another stream that's robotaxi, and that's just a bit more difficult to actually directly embed to the model. We try to embed some optionality through upside cases and richer multiples in that regard. Hey, finally, I don't have a lot of time, but our friends at Datatrex say there's still time, in their view, to do an equity offering to shore up cash. Can you imagine that? Uh, we we don't. They're actually quite fine on on the cash side. Uh, I, I I I see less likelihood of them doing uh, an equity offering. Okay, what in the flip and flapjacking just happened there? Tesla doing an equity offering to get more cash? Uh, what? <laughs> the chances of that are I would call less than ten percent. All things are possible in this world. All things are possible in the stock market. But the chances Tesla would do an equity offering to get more cash at this point in time, I would call it less than a 10% probability. That's just insane. Tesla stock is down 60% plus from where the stock was back in the peak of 2021. So the stock price is down massively. So to do an equity offering when your stock's down massively doesn't usually make sense. Secondly, Tesla's loaded with tens of billions of dollars of cash on their balance sheet. So there's really no reason for them to get money. And they're profitable. And if anything, they're going to be much more profitable in future years than with where they're at right now. So that's crazy. And where's debt at for this company? It's non-existent. So they just like, like none of that made any dang sense. Okay. That, that's, I mean, if Tesla was $500 a share right now, maybe it's different because they're kind of looking in there like, oh, maybe the stock's overvalued. Let's go ahead, raise some capital. We can make some interest income on that. But here, come on. Again, on Tesla is now going to be going to shareholders, asking them to vote again Great. on Elon Musk's multi-billion dollar pay package uh, that they had already granted back in 2018. But a Delaware court had voided that package about three months ago. Join us right now to talk about this on the Squawk News line. Former SEC chairman Jake Clayton, also a CNBC contributor. Uh, the appeal is going to happen in parallel. They're going to continue that. But uh, it appears that such a, a vote, if in fact it was to vote in favor of it, Jay, uh, would make any type of appeal moot. What do, what do you make of this? This idea that they're basically going to attach the decision uh, to the proxy and say, hey, uh, we've just, you know, if the judge didn't think we disclosed everything before, we've disclosed everything now. Well, I think, um, I think you've captured it uh, exactly right, Andrew. Um, here we go back out to shareholders and we say, uh, you have the facts and now you have the benefit of all this hindsight and if you vote in favor of the same package again, um, it, to me, and I'm, and I'm speaking just very, um, uh, you know, 30,000 foot level, it does um, obviate uh, the need for the appeal. Um, and, and look, a, appeal process, court process um, is fairly messy. And if uh, you go to direct to shareholders and they have all the information, um, that, that seems to be a much more efficient way to deal with this. Um, if in fact shareholders um, want to continue with this pay package. And what well, I'll note is, um, you know, this is all part of, uh, I would imagine, retention of Mr. Musk going forward right. as well. And that's the big leverage point in this, which is to say, you know, I think a shareholder has to worry or would, would have to think about whether they should be worried that he's going to, you know, focus his attention elsewhere. Having said that, as the judge said, he already owns a huge portion of, of Tesla. Is he incentivized to keep, to keep going, if you will? Well, shareholders made the judgment. Look, whether shareholders um, knew or did not know of the conflicts um, and what the judge cited was uh, lack of process and the like at the time, when shareholders voted on this in 2018, they certainly understood the economics. Yep. Um, it was widely reported. You widely reported. I think it was a, you know, a 25, 30 to one shot that this would pay off. The you know expected value at the What's time was, was was two billion dollars. Um, the shareholders, the sophisticated shareholders, they knew what they were voting. But Jay, so that's the interesting part about this, which is to say, you're right. In 2018, 
everyone thought this was a completely shoot for the moon, um, you know, as, as I said at the time, a skin in the game program. But it, it, and that was thought, but the context was different. Everybody was thinking about it prospectively. And they thought, you know what, if magically this actually were to somehow come to be, God bless, you'd be very happy to pay it. However, yeah, it's such a bunch of crap. It's such a bunch of crap in terms of everybody, you know, being against or the judge being against us and people being against us now. Because think about it, right? It's like, oh, you made us all a lot of money, so now you don't get paid. I have no issue with this. Like, Elon and Tesla made me a ton of money over the years, right? I made a fortune from that stock, like crazy. I call my house I live in the house that Tesla built for a reason. This stock, you know, changed the game for me. But so. Am I jealous that Elon Musk is getting a bunch of money and I think that shouldn't happen? No, he deserves it. Good for him. He he pulled it off, right? Now, with that being said, let me say this, okay? Let's say Elon left Tesla this year, next year, whatever, okay? Is Tesla doomed at that point in time? No. No, it's not. The rocket ship's already been set up. Elon's already put this company on a great path for the next 10 to 20 years. So even if Elon decided, I'm leaving Tesla, I want nothing to do with it, which, by the way, I hope that doesn't happen. I would love to have Elon continue to be on the team. But if, let's say he's like, you know what, I'm out of Tesla. I'm, I want, I'll want i be on board or something, but I'm not going to run the company anymore. The company's already set up. The robo-taxi is already in place. The FSD is already in place. The employee force is already in place. The factory is already in place. The international expansion is already in place. The vehicle is set for the next 10 plus years already in place. Everything's already there. So at this point in time, if Elon did leave, it doesn't it doesn't make the biggest difference because it's already it's it's no different than Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs set up Apple, obviously, in kind of from about 2000 to 2010, Steve Jobs set up Apple for the next, you know, 15 years, right? And uh, that company was just they're ready. They're ready for the next 15 years, him and Johnny Ive. And now if I look at what Elon and Franz have done over the past, you know, many years, they've set Tesla up for the next 15 years. Like Tesla's gonna grow their revenues to ridiculous levels over this next 10 to 15 years and their profits and the scale of the company and all those sorts of things. So I would love Elon to stay with the company. But like I said, if he left, like Tesla, the rocket ship's already ready at this point in time. So that is what that is. As you know, there are lots of people that when they get in a position and they can now look back and say, do I need to do I need to pay all 50 billion dollars um, if I could cut that by 10 billion dollars or 20 billion dollars? Would I? And, and I think that's going to be the question today. And, um, you know, they did say Tesla, this is that there are four of the largest shareholders in the company that want this vote and want to vote in favor of it. But I'm curious how you think shareholders should think about this, even the ones that voted in favor of it the first time. Well, I, I do believe, and I, Andrew, I, I'm not an expert on the terms of this pay package. I do believe that there's a retention element yes. um, if the shares are awarded as as, um, as planned in 2018. For five years. I mean, that was one of the reasons that I thought the, the program was actually so aligned with shareholders. He has not been granted any of the shares yet. And even if he were to get them today, he would still have to hold them for another five years. So he's with the shareholders for the, for the next five-year ride. So I, I think you're right to, to think about this in both ways. What, what was originally granted, what are the, if you're a shareholder, what are the likelihood that it's going to be reversed on appeal and go back to the same way? And then what's the likelihood that you're going to have to replace it if it's not reversed on appeal with something similar? You know, a rational shareholder may say, hey, let's just vote for this and get on with it. From an SEC perspective, Jay, are there no issues to be looked into? I mean, can, can uh, a company put up for vote a pay package for for work that was done in the past, which is kind of unusual. I mean, how do you think about, if you were still at the SEC, how would you think about this? Well, look, the SEC um, is a disclosure-based organization. And, and, and the, real, the real question here is, is the disclosure uh, sufficient for people to make an informed voting decision? Um, yeah, in this one, of course, the SEC is going to look at it and think about it. But uh, this may be the most uh, disclosed and examined uh, pay package in the history of pay packages. Yes, it is. Very well said. Uh, final thought, Jay, which is there was obviously a, uh, a plaintiff's lawyer that brought this case. And we were, we were talking about the possibility that the plaintiff's lawyer could actually become part of a proxy campaign against the approval of this. What would happen to the appeal if, if, if this, in fact, were to uh, be voted and approved? 
Do you think that Tesla says they're going to continue with the appeal? Part of that would be because they'd have to probably pay the legal fees for the plaintiff's lawyer. Right. Uh, look, let, let's let's separate. Let's separate that from, um, you know, the shareholder voting process. It, 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 it's 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 America. Um, wonderful thing about America is we're going to hear all sorts of opinions on whether people should vote yes or no um, uh, with the disclosure. In terms of how the court plays out and whether the plaintiffs, um, at the end of the day, added value um, for the, the right. Tesla shareholders, that that will be that will be that question. Did did this process add value, and, and should they be compensated for it? We got to run. Is it maybe we're playing it down? Uh, I don't know. The Texas piece of this, they're going to move to Texas. That had been sort of telegraphed. Do you think that other companies are going to follow suit? Um, Andrew, corporate governance uh, has been evolving um, for 50 years between the states and between the federal government um, and the like. And, and there, has, there has been competition um, uh, for shareholders and corporations as to where they're going to incorporate. Um, I, do, I do think that Texas, Nevada... Um, others are challenging Delaware, um, and, and look, our federal system—it's it's appropriate to have uh, have competition. Not, and I don't think, I don't think this is necessarily a race to the bottom. So, uh, before we get into this great debate, Tesla bears and bulls, uh, you know, the Elon. Here's a deal, okay? I know a lot of Tesla shareholders. Do I know any Tesla shareholder who doesn't believe this pay package should go through? I don't personally know one, not one. So, and especially folks that have been on this train for the last five, 10 years, everybody who's, and if you think about where the stock was prior to this announcement about the pay package getting declined, it was, it was in a lot better place, right? So if anything, this has hurt the stock. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see. All right, next one up here. Let's get into the great debate. Tesla, my Tesla. And 35% year to date, and the company now set to report earnings next week. Analysts divided on where the stock's heading from here. And so is the investment committee, it turns out. Bryn Long, why short? Bryn, make your case. Why should we still believe in this stock story? Well, the stock right now doesn't look good. So let's just separate the two, the stock from the company. Um, make no mistake, the chart looks terrible. Don't forget that in January of 2023, I bought it around 120. This stock got to, I think, 100 bucks during the early part of one day of trading. And that's with earnings estimates of $5 for full year 23. So we're not even going to sniff that this year. So this stock could go lower. Let me make that clear. It looks broken right now. Why I would not disc, what I wouldn't discount is Elon. Is I think he's one of the most you know prolific innovators and engineers of our time with SpaceX. Literally, I think NASA would be defunded with what he's done with energy storage and EVs and then at Neuralink. And so I do think though, though, he is gonna have right now between this earnings report, which will be bad, and the shareholder package, I think it's very murky right now because make no mistake, part of this valuation is based on sentiment and also- Investor question, when's the best time to buy a stock? When things are murky, when things are scary. Valuations, margins, and earnings expanding. So Fear. I see absolutely why Steve is short. I don't think he's going to be short long term. I think it's probably a trade. But I think longer time, we will get some clarity. And this will be, over the next few months, a potentially good opportunity to add or buy to the position. My question for Bryn, and, and uh, you know, I'm not trying to be difficult with this, is that as a fiduciary of her investors' capital, how could she invest in a company where there is no governance, there is no independent voice on the board, where they've gone out and made an acquisition like Solar City, right, to stop it from failing because it was his brother's company and because the federal government told SpaceX, you've got to stop buying Solar City bonds with the money we're giving you for R&D, where he's tried to buy, you know, use Tesla for the to buy material for his house, the windows where he wants a fifty-five dollar. Oh, you want to know, Steve Weish? I can show you. I can show you how she puts her investors' money in that stock. Okay, here's the deal: the stock since IPO is up nine thousand six hundred and eighty-four percent, and despite all the drama and bad stuff that has happened over the past five years for the stock, it is still up seven hundred and fifty-three. 
That is how, Mr. Steve Weish. When a company performs, their revenues go beast, their profits go beast, the company does great and has a great long-term future, it usually makes sense to buy the stock. Billion dollar pay, uh, pay package. And where? We saw Jack Dorsey with two companies. We've got Elon Musk with multiple companies that all require his time. Plus, there's the allegations, and we saw it on Joe Rogan's you know, broadcast, of drug use. So how does a fiduciary own this company with anti-shareholder governance repeatedly time after time after time? Isn't it worth just passing on this and going to something you don't have to explain owning? Yeah, well, I own this personally, first of all. This is a personal position. So I think, you know, we love to own broad-based ETFs for the majority of our client base. So this is not a fiduciary decision. This is my decision. And so I think that, you know, what you're pointing out, I mean, these things, you know, I think you just don't like Elon. And so I think that if you separate yourself <laughs> well, and say, look at this company, that's well I think that's tr the truth, I'm right? I'm not and showing so like, sentiments. I'm, everything I say right. is a fact, Bryn. It's a I know. Wait a why, minute. why do you? Why does like he's a grown man and he? I don't know, the Joe Rogan thing is just like strange. And that was years it's ago. Not just Joe Rogan. So I think we, that if you just look Isaacson's at the company, book. if you look at the company, and when you still look at the two companies where the best engineers want to work is our SpaceX and Tesla, because this is not an Elon show as well. Although it feels that way, he has to be able to retain top talent. And I think as it relates sure. to Tesla specifically, being pragmatic about the company. As I said, the chart looks terrible and they are in a very murky situation right now because it feels like, are you going to be a car company that's balancing higher revenues, higher earnings and margins, and then also innovating at the same time with full self-driving, more energy and robo-taxi? Or are you going to do a full pivot to robo-taxi? I think if they come out and do that, that's a revaluation of the name on the downside because that is probably five to 10 years out. So and by the I way, think that- what? Yeah. By the way, why? Sorry, Brent. You know, if, if you know, if this is principally a, a governance-related story, that's one aspect of it. Sounds like it's a, sounds like it's a major one. However, you could right no, major. I, I even put that aside. The fundamentals deteriorating. We've we've hit limit in terms of the EV adoption. They've got the oldest EV lineup in the industry globally. They've got 20% of their revenues coming from China. We've seen what China has done. OK, we've seen Apple move their supply chain to India and they've got better relationships and longer standing relationships with the Chinese government. We've seen China. China is supporting their domestic producers that, by the way, make newer, more richer in terms of the accessories, in terms of. That's not even a fact. You know, he's saying a lot of stuff that's not even like fact. Like, oh, uh, Apple has a lot better relationships, stronger relationships with China than in Tesla. Based on what? Do you, are you inside those conversations? Do you know what Tim Cook and the Chinese talk about? Do you know what Elon and, and the Chinese talk about? Do you know who the Chinese have more respect for? Do they have more respect for Tim Cook and Apple? Or do they have more respect for Tesla and Elon Musk? You know, like, you think you know all this? Like, that, that's just, like, opinion-based stuff. Like, if anything, I think they have, a, you know, the most utmost respect for uh, Mr. Elon Musk over there and what he's done with Tesla, right? I mean, they've done things and rolled out the red carpet in ways for Tesla that we've never seen for anybody, not just in the auto sector, but even for companies like Apple, the way they've rolled out the red carpet over there. So, you know, to just say, oh, you know, uh, Apple's having a hard time and Apple's got strong relationships, like, that's just opinion. Like, you, you have no clue if they do or not. You know, basically, even the, even, you know, the, the, um, the range, so, of their cars than Tesla. Num that's hey, number Scott. two. Yeah. Number three, number three, we've seen Elon just tweet out, oh, no more prices, we're raising prices. He lied. They're cutting prices. We would say, big robo-taxi announcement. We've got, we secured funding for the take private. The guy is a pathological liar <laughs> to keep his stock price up. So forgetting about that, the fundamentals deteriorating. You've got... You've got lots. Well, if he's a pathological liar to keep the stock price up, he's done a pretty dang poor job. I'll say that because it's down over 60% since uh, November 21. So. Of EVs, they're selling at major discounts from the major auto players that couldn't 37 sell. 37% down so this year. the fundamentals year. are horrendous. Yeah. So, so I think that with... In it's China, they actually, no, no, no. Let, let's bring go. Let, I mean, let, one more thing. Go. It's like one more, one more like buzz, buzz line. It's like once again, you just don't like Elon, by the way. And so, so it's like I when you look at, genius, when, you, when, you look at when, when you when you look at 
the EV market, they're actually continue to be with BYD, the top selling brand in China. And so when we look at America, which is about 9% of the EV space, China, which Tesla was the single, it's like the only manufacturing company that was able to build in China autonomously without having influence from the China Chinese government. He has a very strong relationship. I believe they're about to announce they're going to be building their next gigafactory in India, a huge untapped market. And so I think that when you look at this company in the U.S., if this was a U.S. EV story, I would not own this name. That's I don't think Americans want to drive like EVs. In, I think Americans don't want to you drive know. EVs. Um, Adam, as their the, only the car, thing, let me work this in and you go can ahead. say what you want. Then we're going to be done. Uh, Adam Jonas today, Morgan Stanley. Why do we remain overweight Tesla shares? And look, he's been, you know, skeptical along the way about, right. you know, the, the repeated price cuts and all the other stuff. We believe Tesla has significant attributes to be valued as an AI beneficiary, but the company must first see stabilization in the negative earnings revisions mm -hmm. within yes. the auto business. Yep. Right, he's not saying they have yep. But Bryn's entirely wrong about their ability to retain talent. If you take a look at Tesla, and you take a look at, we just had two critical people leave Tesla yeah. this week. They oh, what, dude? Those guys have been with Tesla for like 120 years. Like, are you kidding me? You gotta be flipping my flapjacks. Like, if anything, that shows great retention. Those guys have been with Tesla so dang long. Turnover in their executive and, and they're super rich. Like, the, the fact that he kept those people along the ride for so long, I think it's actually pretty dang impressive. Engineering ranks is legendary, is unprecedented. So I don't know where she gets that from, but look at the facts. And I know it's maybe because I just don't like Elon that all these people are leaving, but I really had nothing to do with it. No, I, 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 I totally, yeah, I mean, this, once again, this, this he's stock a, is definitely up. a... So you feel the stock is up 750% over the last five years. Exactly. Yeah. And I haven't been short over five years. I'm short now because it's all coming home to roost. I understand, but there are periods of time Correct. over the last five years where notable people have been short and it hasn't mattered because their shorts have been proven to have not worked well. Again, I haven't been short, number one. Number two, I, I understand. how <laughs> many other EV manufacturers have we had over the last 10 years? Bryn? What, I don't even know what that means. How many okay. price cuts have we had with Tesla models over with, the last I mean, five Steve, years? Like, how Steve, many, how many with, cuts, with, how Steve many, wisdom what, is chasing you if you would just stop, okay? Like, <laughs> seriously. Like, what the hell is she saying? I don't even get it. Steve, we're going to take a break. We're going to take a break. Just admit you're wrong. The stock is going lower. And I'll buy more lower. That's what she should be saying. Facts are facts. The there's no fact that the stock is there doing anything. There's facts with everything here. I said about the governance, about the price cuts, about his tweets that have all been wrong, about the competitive landscape, about the appetite for EVs. Those are all facts. Bryn, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we will. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, that got feisty. That got feisty. Oh boy, somebody give me a chainsaw for the tension. Holy smokers, that's no jokers. Now, the thing with the Steve Weiss, Mr. Shorthill's capital, here's the thing, okay? Did he bring up some good valid points? Sure. Did he also fabricate some stuff as fact when it wasn't really fact? Yes, several times throughout that. And so, but he believed it's all just facts. It's, it's all facts. It's all facts. And it's like, no, several of those points you made were strictly opinion-based that you don't have a clue of, and none of us do, of some of those answers. And so, you know, even like the notion of like China's doing bad in, in or Tesla's doing bad in China, like that's not even a fact either. Look at Tesla's numbers in China. They've actually been tremendous. Look at where their market share is recently with the most recent data versus their competitors. It's tremendous. So, you know. Man, man, man. Okay, that was that was feisty. That's all I'll say about that. That gets you going. All right, next one up here. We're trying to put Tesla into a meme stock category. What in the world? To talk about the road ahead, Elevation Partners founder, early Facebook and Google investor, Roger McNamee. All right, Roger, I bet I know, but where do you come down on putting this back to shareholders for a vote uh, on stock, obviously, that was promised to him but not delivered because of this court decision overturning the will of shareholders originally who voted in favor of it back in 2018. 
It's my assumption is shareholders will vote for it again, but I think this is the real test of Tesla as a meme stock because it has been so tightly associated with Elon Musk. Musk's brand has taken huge hits over the past year, and it's 50 plus billion dollars, which, you know, in the context of shareholders, that's a that's a real number. And but I do assume they're going to go for it. It would seem as though, you know, it, it does become a referendum on Musk himself, doesn't it? In the sense of at least there have been some, well, if I don't get this, I might leave. That's a, I think that's precisely correct. And, you know, this is utterly ridiculous, utterly ridiculous. A test of the meme stock. Why would you not want Elon at the company? Right. And, and I laid out for you guys that Tesla would be just fine if Elon was to go bye bye for any reason. It's set up for the next 10, 15 years. But why would you not want Tesla? Why would you not want Elon at Tesla? Of course you would. Look at his track record. You, you go all the way back to X.com, which obviously was a huge foundation to PayPal becoming what it became, right? You go back to, you know, Tesla when he overtook Tesla, right? I mean, it was a nothing company and now they're a giant that gets all this talk and debate and massive market cap and massive revenues and all those sorts of things. I think, actually, he's done a pretty dang good job at X. If anything, I'm using X far more than I, X was irrelevant to me a, a few years ago, and now it's actually one of my favorite social medias. I think he's actually doing a great job, and I think he's actually going to pull that, that turnaround job off. I think if he laid off some of the poli political stuff, he would be doing a lot better, though. I'll be honest with you guys. He would be attracting a lot more advertisers, so he's going to have to build back there. But, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, and obviously, if you look what he's done with SpaceX – I mean, you talk about a game-changing company in the private markets, my gosh. So I, I'm like, you know, you want Elon around than not around. Well, I mean, it's a test of Tesla as a meme stock because if, if Musk is no longer viewed as central to the story going forward, then I think Tesla starts to trade like a car company as opposed to, you know, an extension of Elon Musk. And this vote is the test that investors get to say which way they want to go. Yeah. Uh, and overall, I mean, you say it starts to trade more like a car company. Obviously, the stock is down dramatically. It's below a half a trillion. That said, it's about 10 times the market value of the likes of GM or Ford. Yeah. It's, isn't it roughly equal to the rest of the industry put together? I mean, you know, to me, the, the issue with Tesla is that the valuation has been sui generis for years and years and years. And there's just no telling what the thing is that brings it down. But higher interest rates are a bad thing f for stocks in general and for this one in particular. And, you know, Musk's behavior is a terrible thing. The problems with the Cybertruck are real. And the manufacturing issues just in general, I think, are an overhang for the stocks. So there's a lot of bad news. And, you know, let's face it, there's a different mania going on on Wall Street right now around generative AI. And... Tesla's not part of that, and so I think it's well, lost a lot of, of Are they not part of it, though, Roger? I mean, in fact, their, their self-driving is going to, I think, be a big part of that potentially in terms of what they're using now to power it and their hopes for it. Um, I mean, I can remember, you know, we talked about so many years ago, valuation on Amazon because people were like, well, it sells books. It's bigger than the entire book market. Of course, they lacked a 100%. Amazon, you could make an argument. Ever since Amazon became a public company, the stock has been overvalued. Since it went flip and flap jack in public, Amazon's been overvalued. Every step along the way, it's technically been overvalued. It's traded at very high forward P's, trailing 12 month P's, every metric you could imagine. And yet, the stock is up 241,000%. And this company's always, always been extremely overvalued technically and so tesla tesla's always looked overvalued and despite that the stock's up nine thousand eight hundred percent right since ipo over a decade ago it's incredible but great growth companies people you've got to pay up for it i'm sorry you're not getting you're not getting it you're not getting tesla for ford's valuation as much as you might hope oh i wish that could happen no no it's not ford nation here as you well know, investors are not focused on cars. They're fo in part, they're focused on robo taxis, on robots themselves, on so many of the things that Musk uniquely seems able to get a company to do that others can't. David, I would push back in two ways. One, 
the, the technology that they're using is the earlier generation of predictive AI as opposed to generative, which is where the media is today. The second thing is robo-taxis, in fact, self-driving cars, are a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. You know, what, we don't really need cars that cost half a million dollars each in the marketplace today. And the notion that you can get a car to make all the right decisions in a crowded situation where the, the training set doesn't represent all the things that come up, I just think that we're maybe decades away from self-driving cars being real. And decades? by then, decades, push- Roger, come on. I mean, yeah, my no, understanding, by the way, is they're training the cars differently now. They actually have made a significant change in terms of that Tesla, in terms of the underlying uh, data set, so to speak. They have more data than anybody. But decades? What are you talking about? Well, so, so, David, I'm talking about the situation of just putting them out into traffic. Obviously, if you were putting them on specific routes with beacons on anything it could run into, which is exactly what you do with airplanes and what you do with large ships. In that scenario, you could do it today. But as a country, we're not willing to invest in special highways. And the people running these companies aren't willing to wait while that infrastructure investment gets made. And so I just think that it's, I mean, come to San Francisco, be a pedestrian for a while and see what it's like with these things riding around. It's terrifying. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, folks, this is the issue. That was great. I love that we watched that. It was a complete waste of my last two minutes there, him talking about FSD, but it was very valuable at the same time. And the reason it was very valuable is the opinion he just gave there is the opinion of much of Wall Street. These things are decades away. Tesla doesn't have the right technology. They aren't doing this. And I guarantee you this guy probably hasn't even experienced the product. Has he experienced FSD 12? No, we, like... Dude, it does like 98% of the driving for you. You have to interject maybe 1% to 2% of the time now. It's that great. And so to talk about decades is a crazy statement. Like we're way shorter term on this, on this story than these folks realize. And if they experienced the product, they would realize well, this is happening much sooner than decades away. That's crazy talk. He's talking about, oh, the cities need to be fully built out this way and that way. And I'm like, no, no, they don't. That could be helpful, sure, um, if everything was perfect. But that's, no, that's not happening. And how fast the systems are starting to improve now, especially with some of these new NVIDIA chips, it's happening much quicker than folks realize. And I imagine where Tesla FSD 13 is going to be at and 14. Come on, man. So to be talking decades is just, it's just an uneducated view, in my personal opinion. So, uh Whew. That's where you see the debate around Tesla, folks. It's a lot of fun. Appreciate y'all joining me as always. Much love. If you want to join the wait list for 1000xstocks.com, you can go to the website and uh, join the wait list there. Much love and have a great day.